going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. This is the one month review of the A6 DS Lite X-Fly 5, the new generation of X-Fly from the A6 brand. It is a boot that I have absolutely loved playing with and I wanna explain to you why. There is one pretty big drawback though, and I'm gonna share that in this video. Let's start off with the sole plate. So this sole plate is slightly different than X-Fly 4. It's got a little bit of more of a grooved look to it. So as you can see, there's some grooves in it. Um, the construction has changed just a little bit, especially with this external heel counter, a little bit more robust than the X-Fly 4 and really does a nice job of giving you a nice amount of rock. So it feels like you're up on your toes a little bit, as well as having some of, in my opinion, the best studs for both AG and FG. I would truly consider this a multi-purpose stud pattern because of the way that these conical studs also have little grooves in them. So it gives you a lot of pivot power, but also quite a lot of bite when you're trying to do cuts back and forth. So for me, this is a fantastic sole plate. It feels really nice under feet, gives you that little bit of lift so that you feel like you're on your toes, something like uh, a Carbitex insert from the 99 gram leather, those types of sole plates that really kind of push you up on your toes. This feels fantastic, really good amount of snapback as well. And for me, this is an 8.5 out of 10 from the sole plate. The heel area of this football boot is absolutely fantastic. And the reason why is because it's got quite a little, quite a lot of flex to it while also being a little bit lower profile and really nice suede liner. So it kind of gives you all of the things you need to wrap your heel really well. And regardless of what shape your Achilles tendon and heel area is, it is a fantastic fit straight out of the box. There is zero break in time for the heel area. It does an awesome job of wrapping your foot, no slippage because of the way that that suede kind of comes up against any sort of grip or non-grip socks you have. So for me, this heel area is gonna get absolutely top marks. This is a nine out of 10 for heel area. Mega, mega comfort. The upper of this football boot is also really, really awesome. Between the micro SK in the midfoot and heel area and this platinum kangaroo leather in the forefoot with the padding sensation, it is really, really nice. One of the complaints that I had with the 99 gram leather boot is that there's a really big difference between the midfoot heel area and then the kind of bulbous leather forefoot. That is not the case with these football boots. When you put them on, there is a really seamless feel between the leather in the forefoot and the synthetic leather of the midfoot. And so for me, that gives you a really nice sensation on feet. There's no weird grooves that you have to worry about. You don't have to adjust your feet or your shot or your passing or anything like that, like you would kind of a little bit in that leather boot. Um, but 99 gram leather boot, but for me, this upper is sensational. It's so soft, it breaks in really well, and it truly is one of the most comfortable football boots for me on the market. So for me, this is gonna get an 8.5 out of 10. Lockdown of this football boot is pretty good. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. For me, it could use maybe a little bit more in this midfoot area, but because of the way this boot is supposed to fit, which is really lightweight, super comfortable, moldable around your foot, all that stuff, it actually does do a really fantastic job. The other thing that the lockdown benefits from is this really deep, really wide lacing system. So regardless of where your foot juts out or has any sort of uh, different shape to it compared to say like a very standard normal foot, uh, this is gonna give you a really nice wrap around sensation. So the lockdown really does benefit from that and I think when you do tie the laces tight you've got the runner's knot as well too which is that second lace hole that I can put this lace into and then of course wrap it around I'll show you guys in the uh, some of the b-roll you guys will see the runner's knot this is a really nice football boot as far as lockdown goes um, but again for my foot type once I get this in and once I break it in it does does have just a slight, I mean, we're talking like millimeters, millimeters of slippage. Um, it makes no difference. I don't get blisters. I don't get hot spots or anything, but it is one that I would maybe like a little bit more structure to that midfoot of, but we're talking like, we're, we're being really nitpicky because I can't say this is a perfect football boot, unfortunately. Uh, for me, lockdown is an eight out of 10. Break in time for this football boot is also really good. I go half a size down. Uh, for, so I go an 8.5, which means my toe comes right up to the end. So it does fit a little bit 
a um, little bit snug straight out of the box, but that's no issues because of the way this upper feels, the way it breaks in, how comfortable it is. They actually do break in pretty quickly. I can jump into these in a session, wear them without laces for the first, say, 20 to 30 minutes of a session during warm up, even in a uh, professional setting. So in my professional team for Flower City, I can wear them in the warm up of, of even a team training, lace the laces tight, and then they're almost perfectly broken in right away. So for me, that's super impressive from a football boot that's made of leather. Usually leather football boots take a little bit more time to stretch out, but these are really, really excellent. Um, and so for me, these are gonna get an 8.5 out of 10. Durability and build quality of this football boot is the drawback for me. So I love this football boot. I'm gonna continue to buy them. I'm gonna continue to wear them. They are really, really sensational on feet. The issue with AG pitches, they tend to shred leather boots. And as you can see, they're starting to break a little bit. I've only had these like five weeks and they're already starting to rip a little bit. Um, all around the upper, uh, it doesn't have any issues. It's just that separation with the sole plate. The leather quality has actually been really good. Uh, the midfoot hasn't had any issues, but again, the some, especially when you wear them on AG leather boots, they tend to get shredded pretty quickly. And unfortunately, that's just the case with these ones as well. And I've got to knock it down a couple levels because of that. So for me, the durability and build quality of this is going to get a 6.5 out of 10. Shape and fit, this is going to be a very short category because these are almost perfect or near perfect for my feet. These among maybe three or four other boots on the market and from the past fit my foot absolutely perfectly now once they're broken in. This is going to get a 9 out of 10 for the shape and the fit and as I will, uh, I'll say it again, but go half a size down for most people, that'll be great. If you have super, super wide feet, you're probably fine going true to size. Again, we're talking US sizing, but I actually wear an 8.5 US in these as opposed to my normal size 9 US, fit, shape, absolutely perfect in these, nine out of 10. All right, so from a construction standpoint, these compete with the 99 gram leather, or 99 point speed portal leather boot. They compete with the Mizuno Morelia Neo non-beta because they have the traditional U-throat tongue. So from those three kind of traditional uh, competition boots, I would say for my foot, these are the top of the list. Underneath that is very close second is the 99 gram leather. The only reason I'm picking these over the 99 boot is because these have a more seamless sensation on feet as far as the upper goes. And then right below that is the Mizuno product, which I really like, but they're just a little bit thinner. Uh, from a sole plate perspective, they got a, a little bit less width to them. And as far as break-in period of time, the the micro SK for me, this synthetic material, the synthetic leather is more comfortable out of the box and after break-in period of time than the Mizuno product. So for me, this is the top of the list as far as kind of those three boots in the in a very similar construction category. All right, performance of this football boot. Performance is very, very good. As I said before, the only complaint that I would have is a little bit of lackluster when it comes to really aggressive, sharp turns. And we're talking like tiny bit. Most people will not notice. They'll buy this football boot, they'll love it. Um, the other knockdown I'm gonna give it is because of the durability and build quality. So from a performance perspective, can you depend on these all the time? Are they gonna rip? Are they gonna not? Feel so great. One of my teammates actually had a pair of these. I, I put him onto these boots and within about two or three months, the sole plate actually completely split from the upper. I would say, don't worry about that for most people. He is somebody who drags his toes quite a lot. And so I don't think that's gonna be an issue for most people. But again, I'm already having issues with some of the separation of the sole plate. And so for me, that is gonna knock it down from a performance perspective, because you wanna depend on football boots as well as being really comfortable and have great lockdown. So for me, the performance of this football boot is gonna get an eight out of 10. Overall, this football boot is one of my favorite on the market. If I'm gonna pick any pair of my collection or any, any pair in my rotation that is a boot that I can just grab. They're super comfortable, no BS, leather, they, they feel really good, they fit really good, and they there's no issues at all when it comes to break-in time. These are pretty much the top of my list. Nothing else really comes close for me. Um, the 99 gram leather boot is really fantastic as well, but it is synthetic and so it doesn't feel, uh, or at least the midfoot is really thin synthetic, doesn't give as much of a seamless sensation. And the way that these feel, this is, a, this is an interesting observation. When I'm doing a fitness day, when I'm doing sprints on the field, 
these because of the little bit of heel lift, like tiny, tiny bit of heel lift, and because of the way these kind of rock and feel so natural on feet, this is the boot that I like to do fitness days in because they feel so natural to run on grass pitches in. So that's just a benefit that I find. Um, this is a football boot that I absolutely adore wearing. So for me, the overall rating is gonna get an 8.75 out of 10. Very close to the top of the list for me for uh, across all boot categories and all boot brands. That's it for the one month review of this football boot, Asics DS Lite X-Fly 5. These are fantastic. I would highly recommend them. If you're somebody who plays on natural grass, I don't think you're gonna have any issues with durability. Uh, the build quality is really nice, and I, I think most people are gonna really enjoy playing in these. So if you guys like that video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you guys are interested in in-season lifting programs that are very soccer specific, they're the ones that I do. I have programs on my website, we just put up a bundle as well, so you can buy all four phases for once for a discount, which is also awesome. Um, I'll put that link down in the description box below, as well as the link to where I buy these on eBay. So I get all of my ASICs made in Japan, uh, Mizuno, all that stuff from an eBay site. They've been awesome. I'm not sponsored by eBay. I'm not sponsored by the... Uh, the company that does that either uh, and they are fantastic ship really quickly to the u.s and uh, i'll put that link down as well so go check out those programs go check out the uh, the link in the description uh, as always be awesome take care i'll see you guys in the next video